Okay, Roman. I got Roman here. Got Ty. Guys, say hello. Hey, how y'all doing? Guys, we're building a runner pallet today, right? Yes, sir. And so what I'm going to ask you to do is let's break it up into several different parts. One, show us the tools that we're going to be using. Once we do that, then we're going to go into building the bottom. Let's talk a little bit about nail gun usage. We'll flip the pallet over once you've built the bottom. We're going to build the top. Again, let's talk about board placements, talk about hand placement again. And then let's talk at the very end when we go to move the pallet to the rollers. How do we do that? What's safe? And let's talk about those safety considerations, okay? Yes, sir. All right, with that, let's go. All right, now these are the tools that we use when we're building a runner pallet. This right here, this is a scraper. This is what we use to scrape bark with. If the pallet needs to be scraped, this is what we use. Um, this is our hammer. We use this if we have any type of nails that is uh, overhang or uh, stuck in the pallet. We use this to take it out or to hammer it down. This is a nail clipper. This, this is used for when we have like nails that is outside of the pallet, which is called shiners. We use this to cut this up because we have some customers that don't allow uh, shiners. This is a nail puncher. Sometimes the nail clipper can't be used in the middle. It's kind of hard, so we use this right here. And we just put this on top of a nail that may be sticking out on the inside of the pallet. And uh, what this does, it gets the nail out. It, it pushes the nail down to where it gets out. And uh, this is the tape measure. And we use the tape measure to uh, measure the size of the pallet, make sure that our boards are right and that our runners are right. So these are all the things that we use to build a runner pallet. Okay. And then obviously there's other considerations. Anytime we come to a table, there's going to be the work instructions on how to build. And then also there's going to be the, the pallet specification itself. And being able to read that, although it might be outside the scope of this training, we'll have a follow-up where we talk about reading the, the specs. All right, with that, can we go ahead and show us how to build a bottom? All right. What Todd is doing right now, he's grabbing three runners. If your bottom is not straight, then the top is not going to straight. So you want to make sure that your bottom, is, uh, all your boards are flush, are lined up, and that the pallet is square. And how we're going to start off, we're going to start off by building corner to corner. And what that does, it just squares up the pallet to where the pallet is straight and not crooked. Make sure that uh, all your boards are lined up and flush, and that the middle board is touching the blocks that are in the middle. All right, before before we turn it over, let's talk. How do I know where to place the boards? Where do I get that information? Uh, you're gonna follow up with the spec. The uh, spec gonna give you all the information exactly the board placement and you know. Okay, so the specification is going to show where to place the boards on the pallet, what the pallet footprint should look like, right? Yes, sir. Now, how about uh, safe handling of the nail gun, hand placement? Can we talk to me a little bit about that? Yes, sir. Now, you have different ways of where you can do it. I've seen some people do it to where they have their hand right here and they shoot which is okay. You want to have it about six inches or 12 inches, whatever best for you. Make sure that the hand is out of the way. And then you have some guys, which is uh, commonly used, most guys use to where they will put their hand right here and they would shoot the nail as far as away from their hand and they would let go. And they would just line up and shoot, line up and shoot. Okay, all right. Talk to me about right-handers and left-handers. Now, uh, right-hand, I'm on the, I'm on this side and I'm right-handed. You always want to work right to left. You okay. never want to work left to right, and that's because of uh, uh, speed. 
And uh, the same thing on the opposite side. You want to work right to left. You never want to work on the same side because if you work on the same side, my partner, he may be trying to pull the same board that I'm pulling, and he may pull away. I may try to shoot, may mess around and shoot my hand because he don't pull the board away, or he may shoot himself because I don't pull the board away from him. So you always want to work on the opposite side. With, I will start on this side, go straight down, he will start on that side and go straight down, right to left. And we would do the same thing when we get into the middle. I will start right here and I will go this way. He would start right here and go this way, right to left, it's the same way. Okay. That's why our nails don't, our nail guns don't bump each other. I don't shoot him and he don't shoot me. All right. So now we're going to flip the bottom, right? And uh, we're going to build the top. So. The right way to spread the boards is just like how I have spread it. You never want to lay the boards down like this right here, and then grab, just grab one and shoot, and shoot. The reason being because you want to spread it out so you see what you got. And you need to make sure that all the boards are spaced out evenly and lined up evenly. If you was just to do it like this right here, you may have some boards that are spaced out real wide and now the pallet looks crazy and also when you spread it out together when both partners are doing it it's faster that way and it's effective that way and you get the job done faster okay you also want to make sure that the rough side is always facing up So tell me about considerations with the boards, board quality, uh, things that you're looking for as you're, you're nailing. Now, the things that we look for is not. You have different kind of knots. You have some knots that are small. You have some knots that are big. You never want to shoot a knot. If you shoot a knot, you can shoot a knot, but you have to be careful about how you shoot a knot. And stuff, like I said, you have different sizes. You have small ones and you have big ones. You can try to avoid them or you can try to shoot them. If you do shoot a knot, make sure you watch where your hand is because sometimes if you shoot a knot, the nail will go in and it'll curve sometimes because of the knot or sometimes the, the wood would explode and you have to get another one because it done broke up and it's no good. So you got to be careful of how you shoot a knot. So again, that's why hand placement is so critical in preventing injury. Yes, sir. One more time, sh show us. What's the right way to, to hold the wood in your hand? You can hold it. You can hold it like this. Or you can hold it like this. Line it up with your thumb and your pointing finger. Line it up, shoot. Line it up, shoot. All right. Line but, it up, shoot. But show, but show me, um, so when you hold it with your pointing finger and your thumb, Obviously, there's a point there where you got to move your hand out of the way, right? Yes, sir. First shot, you're going to move. After you use, like my partner said, after you do that first shot, boom. You move your hand out of the way. You shoot the one nail, that one nail, as far as away from your hand, then you move your hand to the next board. Okay. And again, you do the same thing to the next board. And, and what, how far away should we always keep our hands from? At least six, at least six inches to 12 inches. Okay. All right. So, so now, in this case here, the pallet's done, isn't it? So, what do we do about getting it to the roller in a safe manner? Now, sometimes, depending on the size of the pallet, my partner would lift the pallet towards me. I would lift with the pallet on my thighs, or close to my, close to my thighs, to my, my hip. That's just depending on the size. Yeah. So like a big pallet, I would both carry it. Yeah. Now if it's a big pallet, the easiest way to carry a big pallet is you would rather wear 
the uh, forklift comes to pick the pallet up. That's the easiest way to do it. Okay. So uh, some of the, the considerations when we're doing it this way, which is the safest way, and that's how we want people to lift. We really want, we, if you got a partner, we want two people to be lifting the pallets just to minimize any potential for risk. But the safety considerations are always going to be the same, which is keep the pallet close to your core as possible. The farther away you get out, above and below, you get toward a, safety, a danger zone of hurting yourself. The other thing that we want to be cautious about is as your walkway here you've done, it's clear, it's clean, right? So you've already thought through how you're going to travel and you've cleared your path. So those are a couple of safety considerations. Make sure that before we lift the pallet that it's loose, it's free, that there's nothing to hold it down. We don't want people to jerk. We want a nice, slow, smooth movement when lifting. All right. So guys, any other final considerations? Thank you.